Hi guys, Mrs. A here. Uh, today we're looking at solving linear systems using the elimination method. We know that we can solve linear systems in a few different ways. We can do it by graphing the two lines and um, finding the point of intersection that way. We can use the substitution method or we can use the elimination method. So today we're going to use the elimination method and that's because our two equations are given to us in standard form. And so when both equations are in standard form, um, this form lends itself to the elimination method. This would be more work to use a substitution method here to solve um, the system. So when a question says solve the linear system, that means to find the point of intersection. We know that when two lines are graphed, they cross at one point in most cases, and we want to find what that point is. So to use the elimination method, we're going to compare the x terms and the y terms here. Notice how I've written them above each other, so I have a column for the x terms and a column for the y terms and then a column for the constants. These constants could also be on the left side of the equation with zero on the right hand side and that would serve the same um, purpose here. So when we compare the coefficients of the like terms, the x here has a two and the x here has a three and then the coefficient of the y has a negative three and the other y has a positive six. So neither of the terms have the same coefficient. So we need to manipulate the equations a little bit here to force them to have the same coefficient because that's how we eliminate a variable. So let's call this equation one and let's call this equation two here. So if you think about your multiples for numbers, we see that the three and the six are multiples of each other. So if I take the three and I multiply it by two, then I'm going to have a six here and a six here. So let's do that. Let's manipulate this equation here to force it to have a six. So I've chosen what I see as the easiest method right now. That's not the only way that you can eliminate a variable, but that's the way that I see it as the easiest with just one step. So if I want to change this to a six, I have to multiply it by two. But if I multiply this time term by two, I need to multiply this term by two and this term by two. You have to multiply the entire equation by two in order to keep it the same equation and not change it into something else. So let's rewrite this now. Here, I'm gonna rewrite my two equations. So if I take a two X and multiply it by two, I get four X and negative 3y times 2, I get negative 6y, and then 4 times 2, and we get 8. So that's the new equation. It's just a multiple of the original, so it is the same equation. And I'm going to keep my second equation the same. So let's write it directly underneath. Make sure they're in nice columns, like this. And now you see that my y terms have a negative six and a positive six. So that's the term that we're going to eliminate here, the y term. So now we have to compare the signs of the coefficients. This y term has a negative and this y term has a positive. If I want to il eliminate the y term, I can add these two together and I'll get zero because negative six y plus six y gives me zero. So I'm going to choose now to add the equations together. Now, if I had a positive six and a positive six, I would subtract the equations because then I would get six minus six gives me zero. So you're the one that determines whether to add or subtract the equations together to eliminate a variable. So now let's do this and we have to do it in columns again because we want the like terms to come together. So 4x plus 3x gives us 7x. And then negative 6y plus 6y gives us 0. So that's good. We get nothing here. And then on the other side, 8 plus negative 15 is going to give us negative 7. And so now look at the simple equation that we've created. 7x equals negative x. And we know how to solve that. We do the opposite operation. So I'm going to divide by the coefficient of x here. And I'm left with x equals negative 
1. And there is the value of the x coordinate for my point of intersection. But a point has an x and a y coordinate, so we're not done here. We need the corresponding y coordinate for our point to go along with that negative 1 for the x. So at this point, you can go back to your equations. We have two here. This negative 1 will give us the corresponding y coordinate, whether we use the first equation or the second equation. It won't matter. So I suggest you choose the one that looks easiest to you to solve for your y. So I'm going to pick equation number 1 here, and I'm going to sub this into equation 1 and then solve for the remaining y variable. So let's bring equation 1 down. So that was uh, 2x minus 3y equals 4. So now we know that x equals negative 1. We solved that. So we're going to bring that negative 1 into the x and sub it in. So 2 times negative 1 now, since x is negative 1, minus 3y equals 4. Let's evaluate this, 2 times negative 1, and that gives us negative 2 minus 3y equals 4. So we want to solve now for the y variable. There's only the y left, we're going to solve for the y. So we're going to bring this negative 2 to the other side by doing the opposite operation, add 2 to both sides. So this gives us plus 2 here, plus 2 here. Okay, so we've eliminated the minus 2, and we're left with negative 3y equals 6. So now, to get the y by itself, we do the opposite operation. I'm going to divide on both sides by the coefficient of y. That's negative 3. Okay, so the negative 3's uh, cancel here, and then we're left with y equals 6 divided by negative 3, which is negative 2. And there's your y coordinate for the point. So our point of intersection for the two lines that we had in the original question is x, which was negative 1, comma, y, which is negative 2. So that is the solution to our system, which is the point of intersection for the two lines that we were given. Thanks for watching. This is A Loves Math.